coming. We're ready to launch when you tell us. When uh, we thought fire could be controlled, suppressed out of existence, or kept as a minor nuisance. And we're, and we're now learning the lessons of the past that uh, we probably just would be better off if, if we started partnering with fire a little bit more. We've created a remarkable hazard out there. So there's, there's more fuel, many acres, most acres have more fuel than they've ever had. And, uh, and, and we've created forest types and forest structural conditions that have never existed in 15,000 years. And we have created those. Uh, and uh, that's starting to bite us. Fire seasons are already longer and all of the projections, regardless of the assumptions, uh, show a warming trend which will mean an earlier start to fire season and a, a later end to fire season, plus implications on snowpack and all those kinds of things. Well, we're at the Dendroecology Laboratory at Oregon State University's College of Forestry. We have probably about a thousand pieces of wood that we sampled out of dead trees that record history of fire um, from the present day back almost a thousand years. Historically, that is, in, before we started excluding fire from the landscape in the late 1800s. There was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fire on the landscape. Much more fire than there is today. Most uh, forests in Eastern Oregon, for instance, used to burn every five or 15 years for hundreds of years prior to Euro-American settlement. We excluded fire from the landscape for more than 100 years. Fire is returning. We're hoping to get to a place where the return of fire is something that we can live with. So this is a slice of wood, a tree cookie that came from a ponderosa pine in the Mission Creek watershed just to the north of here. And what, what each of these little lines on here, these are fire scars, or a year where a fire came through this forested stand uh, killed the small layer of living cells on the outside of the tree, but the tree survived and kept growing and would heal over this. So what this allows us to do is by counting the tree rings and counting the rings up to those fire scars, we're able to see in what years we had fires. And so what this, what this shows us is that through the 17 and 1800s, there was a fire every 10 to 15, 20 years within this forest. We come up here to 1908 was the last recorded fire, you know, and then we have a nearly 70 year gap or this tree did not experience any fire. And this was, this was the era of wildfire suppression. The way out of this uh, is to not always suppress fire so that it only burns under the worst of conditions. We get ignitions throughout the entire fire season, including some very modest conditions. And if we work with fire down in this part, Ultimately, we can change the disastrous results we're getting under those worst of weather conditions. We're going to have to choose uh, to you know, either continue resisting it and let it bowl over top of us or seek out a different relationship uh, with fire, part partner with it, uh, work with it, and choose when, when and how things are going to burn rather than just always having it burn under the worst of conditions.